In this video, we'll demonstrate image-guided percutaneous coil embolization of an ascending aortic pseudoaneurysm. This is a 77-year-old lady who was one month status post a David procedure, which is repair of the aortic valve and replacement of an ascending aortic aneurysm with a Dacron graft. She represented with a syncopal episode. And when a chest CT was performed, it showed a distal anastomotic pseudoaneurysm on the inner curve of the aorta and a mediastinal hematoma. The pseudoaneurysm had a very narrow neck measuring approximately millimeter in diameter. You can see it's demonstrated on the axial uh, sections here. Uh, we thought the best approach to this would be through the uh, upper extremity. Uh, we, the catheter was placed in the aortic root and we tried to catheterize that but could never actually get into it using a variety of different approaches. We opted to observe her for the next three days, repeated the CAT scan. To our alarm, it had gotten bigger with more hematoma around the pseudoaneurysm. So we really felt at that point definitive therapy uh, would be required. We took her back to a hybrid operating room. The plan was to reattempt uh, embolization and if that failed, uh, to immediately go to um, stenotomy, basically and cardiopulmonary bypass for repair. We decided, because of the earlier futility in trying to catheterize this from an endovascular standpoint, to approach it directly uh, using a transsternal percutaneous uh, puncture. And here you can see is the using an image guidance system called eye guide, where we're planning the route from the skin into the pseudoaneurysm here measuring a depth of 46 millimeters from the skin. And what was very helpful was the fluoroscopic visibility of the second and third uh, sternal wires. So it's a fairly easy approach uh, directly between those sternal wires, uh, straight posterior and into the pseudoaneurysm. So here we planned the image path. That image path is then pushed to the uh, phenol, uh, and the laser shows us where that uh, path basically should originate. We then use this called the C-star, which is an image stabilizer, which we very carefully align. This is perhaps the most crucial part of the entire case. If you get the needle guidance system aligned properly, uh, then you will uh, pretty easily access these pseudoaneurysms. And this is what it looks like. We're using uh, empty sponge stick to try and orient this, uh, make sure we look straight down the barrel of it, and then we advance that needle to a depth of 4.6 centimeters. Um, and we then check in the position of this uh, to see uh, where we are in relation to the pseudoaneurysm. The yellow lines represent the needle guidance track, and then we actually, here's the needle uh, straight inside the pseudoaneurysm, and its position confirmed by injecting into the pseudoaneurysm. Um, we first of all confirmed that there's a blood return that could only be either coming from the aura or the pseudoaneurysm. And then we dub an on-table angiogram by directly injecting into the needle. And you can see we opacify the pseudoaneurysm, which then forms this track through the hematoma. We then attach the two eborse adapter and place a series of uh, coils. Uh, these are detachable coils, which we advanced uh, straight into the pseudoaneurysm cavity. And here you can see we're filling up the pseudoaneurysm cavity. I think we used a total of about um, uh, four or five coils. We actually coiled back the, the embolization pathway slightly. Uh, at the completion of this, we did a cone beam CT just to uh, confirm this. Is, first of all, we did an angiogram um, using a 30 per second frame rate. There was no evidence of a pacification of the pseudoaneurysm. There was the, the previous bleeding from the needle was gone, and the cone beam CT showed that we were in exactly the right location with that coil pack. So at that point, we terminated the procedure. Uh, we did watch her in the ICU for a few days, then repeated the CT scan. Obviously, there's significant artifact from this, but you can see no evidence of dye in the pseudoaneurysm. The coil pack is exactly where the pseudoaneurysm was, and uh, the patient was uh, transferred to the floor, has subsequently been discharged, and has been asymptomatic. Um, we uh, plan to get a follow-up CT scan just to be ensured that the uh, pseudoaneurysm continues to be excluded. Incidentally, there was no evidence that this was infected or to suggest that there was a more uh, generalized problem with the suture line. This was a fairly elegant way of approaching this from a minimally invasive standpoint. Clearly, we'll need to follow her up 